So without further ado, I guess I'll just spoil it. Tonight I'm going to be photographing the Pelican Nebula, the famous Pelican Nebula in Cygnus, right next to the North American Nebula. And uh, it's going to definitely be in one of the easier nights, I should say. So it's actually the next night after I posted my recent YouTube video and we have a lot of smoke coming again so I will have to be switching targets tonight and I have something in mind even though I'm getting really bored of Cygnus I'm just kidding Cygnus is an awesome constellation but I really wanted to switch it up I really wanted to photograph something that isn't in Cygnus but I've been doing Cygnus literally all summer and with the moon it's kind of just real tricky to find something else to photograph right now so I will be taking a picture of something else and you guessed it, Cygnus. Ugh, I gotta stop. The Cygnus stuff is crazy. Alright, so you just found out that I will be photographing the Pelican Nebula in my backyard tonight. I will be showing you my budget-level refractor telescope paired with my expensive astrophotography camera to reveal a lot of those details that our human eyes are not able to see. My name is Tanner from AstroTan, and welcome to the YouTube channel. So, what even is the Pelican Nebula anyway? But before I say anything, personally, I don't see the Pelican in the Pelican Nebula at all. But the Pelican Nebula is actually located in the constellation of, you guessed it, Cygnus. Now I know what you're going to say. I've been taking pictures of Cygnus this entire summer and I seriously need to stop. Well, I'm trying, but I literally can't find any other targets right now that will suit what I want to photograph. I know, I'm kind of a picky astrophotographer when it comes to this kind of stuff. Pelican Nebula is located in the constellation of Cygnus, right next to the North American Nebula, and I guess you can call it part of the North American Nebula. Now actually, I can see why they call it the North American Nebula, you could probably find out too. But anyway, it's a fairly bright nebula in comparison to the target that I previously just shot in the backyard last night. And it's not going to be that tricky to get it, especially with my narrowband filters and my cooled astrophotography camera, the Player One Artemis C Pro. I also checked my framing for this target and it is almost perfect for framing the Pelican Nebula. I get that nice wide field of view that I can be able to see the entire thing. That's one thing about having a wide field refractor like mine is that you're able to see a lot of space in one picture. You were able to see a lot of those wide field targets like the area of Cygnus where there's just a ton of things going on. And don't get me wrong, you could use a big telescope to see a lot of those fine details, but to be able to cover a lot of Cygnus in just one image, that's something that really interests me. The one drawback behind wide field refractor is that in spring we miss a lot of those details in those galaxies because spring is actually called galaxy season because of the way the Milky Way is situated in the night sky. In spring the Milky Way typically likes to rise around in the early morning hours and throughout the entire night we really don't get to see our galaxy itself so we are looking up into the vastness of space. So that's when all the galaxies are out and that's when all the big guys with the big, big telescopes like to come out and show off their crazy resolution for their galaxy images, which I've tried before with drizzling and everything, but it really is not helpful. All I need is just a big telescope, which I don't have because things cost money. I've always wanted to buy a big telescope for this purpose because my telescope is kind of like a camera lens or a telephoto lens, only about 448 millimeters of focal length, and that's really not that much. Not to mention it's especially good for planets because like we talked about in my video of Saturn, we need a lot of focal length and a lot of magnification to get those really good pictures of planets. So the Pelican Nebula is around 1,800 light years away, which is actually pretty darn close in comparison to the entire universe itself, and it is a H2 region of space, which is a lot of the red color that my camera will be able to let in with a lot of ease. It's situated right in the middle of the Milky Way arm, also called the Great Rift. When Cygnus starts its move on in the coming months, I will be eventually just moving down the Milky Way arch. I will be taking a look at the constellation of Cassiopeia and going further down as we go. I have a lot of targets in mind like the Wizard Nebula, the Elephant Trunk Nebula, and even the Bubble Nebula or the Ghost of Cassiopeia. And they are all some amazing targets that I've just been waiting to shoot with this new camera because my stock DSLR was not able to get a lot of that color and a lot of that signal that I really want that now my new 
camera is able to do. I actually haven't had a lot of nights out with my new camera because of the smoke and a lot of issues like clouds and crazy summer thunderstorms that we've had and, and it's really nice to have such a good camera that will give me some great results. I can finally compete with a lot of the big guys who have a lot of these cameras and I won't have to be stressing about that filter removal that you could do. You still can do it by the way but having a cooled astrophotography camera might be better just down later down the line. So the telescope I'm going to be using tonight is my SV Boney SV503. It's an 80 millimeter ED doublet refractor and that means that it's a telescope designed for astrophotography. It will give me some amazing star colors. The stars won't be bloated and it will be able to focus the red, green, and blue color all at once with those two glass elements. The telescope is actually pretty cheap in terms of the astrophotography telescope world. A lot of telescopes need to be altered to be able to take astrophotography shots and this telescope is no exception except it is on the relatively cheaper side of things, not in terms of quality, but in terms of price. It was around $450 when I got it, and it's been an amazing telescope. A lot of more expensive telescopes in this area will range from $600 to $700, but I definitely recommend this telescope. You can get it on Amazon, I'm pretty sure. All right, so it's finally dark out here, and we are currently imaging the Pelican Nebula from our backyard. Uh, I didn't have to do anything crazy tonight, it was just take off the cover, get the plugs in, and that was it. We were already polar aligned from last night, and we had everything ready, so we were all ready to go the minute that sun went down. So anyway, we still have this moon, it is 93% illuminated tonight, but at least it kind of skirts the horizon a little bit, it's not really high in the sky anymore. Typically the moon is actually high in the sky when it's in the winter time, and the sun kind of skirts the horizon just like the moon is in the winter time as well. In the summertime, the sun is really high in the sky, hence the long days that we have in the summertime, and the moon actually takes the sun's place in the wintertime in the summertime by skirting along the horizon. So luckily, it's not really that much of a problem tonight, and I also have my narrowband filter, so I'm pretty sure everything's gonna go just fine tonight. We're also gonna get some pictures of the planets because this is one of our best summer nights that we've had. The seeing is actually really good tonight. Transparency, it is completely clear out here, and we are just waiting for this first exposure to come in. So I'll see you guys soon.